What's up guys, GT Gamer here and welcome back to Train Simulator 2017. And I'm actually visiting, visiting a locomotive I've done before, but I've never done a talking video about it. It was basically a cab ride. I just put the camera in place and just ped it up a little bit. But today we're doing an actual journey in the Class 66. This is EWS, so it's quite an old library, because EWS doesn't actually exist anymore. So we're going to be taking 10 tanker cars from here in Paddington all the way out to the other end of the track in Oxford. So there's Oxford there and we're going to be going via Redden and Slough and the start point is all the way down here at the end of the Great Western Main Line. So there's our train and I suppose there's not much left to do now so let's set out so I need to turn headlights on first things first there we go perfect and let's jump in the cab have a little little bit of a look around so our controls do these work hazard warning no no that's the horn Oh, it's two tone, so it has a high pitched one and a low pitched one. We have the brake, the locomotive brake, the sander. Do they work? No, no, no. Ooh, emergency brake. Yeah, let's not press that. We also have up here, uh, none of these work. Engine start, that's quite important, but it doesn't seem to work. We have these down here, don't know what they are and here's our reversal and throttle anything over there? no not really right so I'm going to put the HUD on for this journey in the minimized mode I'm going to put it in forwards brake off and oh you can see the brake pressure there the needles are moving and let's give it notch one of power I think there's eight power settings in this train not entirely sure so off we go to Oxford I don't know why they need 10 tanker cars at Ox Oxford Passenger Station, but, you know. This train, fair play, it's like the iconic train in Britain. Like, they're on every line, pretty much. Like, they go past my house. They don't use this library anymore. Like, you still see the occasional one, but now, every time they get serviced, they get repainted, because EWS got bought by D.B. Schenker. So, it's a shame, I did lo used to like this old library. It is a bit dull though, isn't it? Right, what's the speed limit? 40, we can really give this a boot full, I think. Full throttle, very powerful train. We are going in the winter at 9 o'clock in the morning, it's just after 9 now. And you can see it's snowing, got some lovely snow on the ground. In fact, we might need to put the wipers on, and I can't remember, oh, left on the d-pad. I'll have to remember that. Speed limit's going up to 50 soon. Gotta say, this game is quite good on the frame rate, fair play. But I'm getting solid 50 at the moment, and my computer's not the best. It's not bad, but it's not the best computer. Someone did actually mention the other day when I was playing uh, Transport Fever that my computer's very low, very um, close to the minimum specs. It's not, but it's not high-end either. I think it costs about 900 quid altogether. There is a good computer. I tell you, categorically the worst part with my computer, internet, the internet connection. Like at the moment, it's not bad. I'm getting about 10 up, uh, 30 down, megs that is. But before, when I was on a different provider, I... The, the router was right next to my TV in the living room and bear in mind that's the opposite side of my house so when I went to download Grand Theft Auto 5 off Steam I thought mm, it'll take a fair while yeah I was getting 500 kilobytes a second maximum it took three days to download it like seriously that was terrible and what really sucks is I moved the router into my bedroom and then I was getting about 60 megabytes uh, download speed and then my dad decided to change provider and I don't know why but as soon as he made the phone call and made the decision to switch over I was then getting 112 megabytes per second which is like really really fast pretty much and 
It was so annoying. Just as he changed provider, it went up for that last couple of days. Now I'm on a different provider. And it's not great. It's not terrible, but it's not great. Right, we should, yeah, 100 miles an hour. We're starting to pick up speed now. Uh, I'm going to give it half throttle until we actually hit the speed change. Going right over to the fast track, it appears. Now, if I remember right, the top speed is, yeah, 75 miles per hour. Number one cab. And I can tell you why they put that. Because this locomotive, if I go to the outside view, actually has two cabs, one at either end. So it can, doesn't have to turn around or anything. It can just swap ends of the train to change direction. Which is a pretty cool feature. Hence why it has tail lights on the front. I'm not entirely sure why it has like two headlights on the one side and one on the other. Perhaps it's something due to with telling people what track it's on or something. I don't know. I'm not going to pretend I do. I don't. I wonder if you'll see any other traffic on the way down. I hope so. That's the one thing I hate about this game is that there's never ever any other traffic on the routes like very few routes actually have traffic on them like the only one really is the South Wales mainline South Wales Coastal like there are other routes the um, what's it called the Scar Special the Riviera line which is on the south coast in Cornwall that has traffic the only problem is every single thing on there is a steam train to set in the 50s and another line is the West Coast Main Line up north. But then once again, all of it's steam train. And I really cannot drive a steam train. I know a lot of people do like their old steam trains. I just can't drive them. I'm terrible in them. Maybe one day I'll do a video, but God knows. Hey, that's a good point. The new game, Train Sim World, that doesn't have any steam trains in it. Ooh, I think Dovetail Games missed the trick there, because a lot of old, a lot of people like their old steam trains. Ooh, I've, ne I've literally just thought of that. I, as far as I know, there's no steam trains in it. Right, we're coming up to the top speed now, so I'm going to see if I can find the throttle setting which will hold our speed. Uh, between 12 and 25 should be okay. How far have we got to go? About 60 miles, so it should take just under an hour to do this journey, providing it's this speed all the way. I know that up to Reading, or just before Reading, we'll be on high speed tracks. But then after that, I think we go on to like a double track section up to Oxford, and I really don't know what the speed limit is on that. But we should be able to go pretty fast, especially on the first leg of the journey. I was hoping it would be a little bit lighter than this, to be honest. But then it is winter, isn't it? I was thinking 9 o'clock. Yeah, it's usually light at 9 o'clock. And then I realised it's winter as soon as I loaded in. I don't know. A little bit of a night run could be cool. I think that's definitely something that could be cool. This is actually the second video I recorded today. It's quite late, late at night now. It's... Uh, 10 o'clock, just on 10 o'clock, so I should be finished recording about probably quarter past 11 because I'll go back and get a thumbnail maybe. But I just recorded uh, episode 17 of Transport Fever, that's going to be out in a few weeks probably after this is going to be released because I'm doing them every Wednesday and I tend to record at least one a week, so I've got a little bit of a few back there. But if you haven't seen Transport Fever, it's like a strategy game where you try and build your own little tycoon empire using transport links and freight networks. It's pretty cool. And I tell you, my series is just getting exciting because I've got to admit, when I started the series, it was quite slow. I'd spend most of my time chatting and not getting anything done. And most of our lines were losing money. But then I decided to put my foot down and go, right, we're actually going to get stuff done and we're making millions now like I had 80 million at the end of the last episode and that was just from that episode and I was building stuff at the same time so in that time I recorded that we probably made 100 to 150 million dollars 
So if you haven't seen that series, make sure you check it out. It is just getting interesting. And the great thing is you don't have to go back to the beginning and watch all the episodes if you don't want to. You can literally jump in at any time and kind of get a grasp of what's going on. Like it shouldn't take you too long to pick it up. What's that light off in the distance? I don't know. There's no station coming up. Oh, there is on the other track, that's why. I was looking at the map at the bottom thinking, hang on, there's no station coming up. Yeah, there is. But yeah, that transport fever is just... Transport, theories. transport fever is just getting really epic now. I, I'm starting to love that game. It's, it's a game where one minute you love it, one minute you hate it, but you always love it really in your heart. And, oh God, it's the most amazing game. Like the graphics in it are epic. Oh my god, we're speeding. Didn't notice how fast we were going. Oops, a daisy. Oh, that's a pretty cool detail. The speedo has a little red line where the top speed of the train is. That's pretty cool. But yeah, in Transport Viva, I'll give you a little bit of a taste there, shall I? We're, well, in the next episode, which I haven't recorded yet, but I've already planned, we're going to be building a hub, because I put it in in this episode, but it was kind of a crappy temporary one. But right below Sandy Shores, because it's based on the Grand Theft Auto V map, I'm going to put in, like, a super hub with a massive freight station, and everything's going to get fed into there, transferred from train to train, and distributed, or sent to a factory to be turned into a product and then distributed. We're going to make so much money off that. I cannot wait to put that in. I'm so excited. That's why I'm talking about it so much. I'm so excited for that. Where are we? Southall. Ooh, there was a crash in Southall. I rem well, I don't remember it because I wasn't born yet, so I was like a, like a one-year-old or something like that. But I watched the documentary on it, and the train was changing track. It went through a red light, across a junction, and collided head-on with a high-speed train. I what? Yeah, I watched a documentary about that. The guy's name was Michael Hodder. I don't know why I remember that. I just do. That's the detail that stood out most to me. And, yeah, a lot of people died, and that was somewhere in Southport, it was just after the yard, I think. Um, I'll know the junction if I see it, we've probably gone past it while I was nattering on. But, it, yeah, we have. But it was right by Southport Yard. Right, we're coming to Hayes and Harlington, let's have a little bit of a look around, shall we? Very lovely this evening. Like, it's a little bit dark, I said that, but other than that, it is lovely scenery in this game. You get a lot better perception of speed outside, I find. Like the train feels like it's going faster. I'm not sure if that's because I'm in the outside camera or just the snowflakes are going past. But when I was driving like the TGV and the Accela in America, I just noticed that you didn't get much perception of speed. This is Haven Carlington, by the way. You didn't get any perception of speed, so it's like you go in 185 miles an hour, and it's just like any other train journey. But in the outside camera, it's either the camera or the weather. Something is making this feel faster. I don't know what though. It's one of those things where you know it, you just can't put your finger on it. Yeah, it definitely feels like we're going 75 miles an hour now. West Drayton. This line, the Great Western Main Line, <coughs> it has four tracks. Well, here it has five, but usually has four tracks. And it has two fast lines and two slow lines. Hence why we're passing so many stations. Like the high-speed trains which go along here, they won't stop at these stations. They just won't. They'll stop at like Slough and Redding, but other than that, they'll just fly through here at 125 miles an hour. And then you have the slower services on the other lines, and they do stop at everything. So there'll be a train that stops at West Drayton and all that, but the HST will just go flying through. So the Great Western Main Line it is a really interesting line. It was built by um, Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Well, it was designed by him and built by probably hundreds of very poorly paid men but it's like the flattest train line anywhere it was called billiards uh, what was it 
uh, Brunel's billiard table because it was just so flat. It really is like a pool table. And there is one really cool thing I know, but unfortunately we're not going to see it in this video. Near Bath, which if you're not familiar with the UK, is west of London near Bristol, on the way to Bristol. Uh, in Bath there's a tunnel called Box Tunnel and this was built by Brunel and at the time it was so straight it's like it was the straightest tunnel ever built like for its length it's over a mile long and it lines up or apparently it's like a myth that it lines up perfectly that on Brunel's birthday as the sun rises it will shine through this straight tunnel and it'll like illuminate this all the way down its length and I don't know if that's true, I doubt it but it's a cool story either way like imagine that for your birthday every single year the sun shines down this, this marvel that you built and designed and put hundreds of hours of work into and the sun will illuminate it just on your birthday I think that's so cool like I doubt it I doubt it's true but either way it's amazing like Brunel is like the best inventor designer Britain's ever seen pretty much he designed the uh, Clifton suspension bridge which is in Bristol is a very tall unique suspension bridge and he also built remember I mentioned earlier the Riviera line on the south coast he built that pretty much and it runs right along the coast it's really cool like the beach runs next to it and it goes through all these towns. It's a really cool line. I probably should do a video on there at some point. And he also built Bristol Temple Mead Station, which is like the terminus of the Great Western Main Line. Sadly, we're not going to go that far today, but it's still pretty cool. I think I have gone to Temple Meads before. Well, I know I have, but I just can't remember what video it was. It was on the South Wales Coastal. I don't know, you can probably find it with a little bit of searching. It's such a shame there's no traffic on this route. That's one thing which hats off to uh, trains in world. Like, AI traffic is built to a real timetable. Like, you can drive past a train, instead of just going, oh, there's a train there, you can go, oh, that's the uh, 8.36 from Bristol, that is. Like, I, obviously I just made that up, I'm not a train spotter or anything like that. Don't know them too well. But, like, if you really like trains and you really wanted to, you could actually sit there and spot real trains in the game. I think that's so cool. It's built around, it's a 24 hour. Like, the trains will run in the game either way, but you can just jump in and say, eh, I'll drive this one for a bit. Right, we're coming up on Slough. Slough is a very big city in the Thames Valley, west of London. We're going west. This line goes out towards Bristol Company, but it also splits at Swindon into the South Wales Main Line, which the South Wales Coastal Route is based on. Well, it is, really. And at Temple Meads as well, there's lines going all down south to the Riviera Line. There's lines going north and joining onto the West Coast Main Line. There's all sorts of lines. The great, it's a very crucial line, the Great Western Main Line. Very, very important. Like, this pretty much fabricated the Industrial Revolution in a certain sense. Like, instead of sending hundreds of trucks or some boats really long distances, you could ship, I think mainly coal from South Wales, they'd ship coal along the Great Western Main Line and then you could distribute it to a town in the middle of England without having to build canals and all, all them kind of things, expensive roads, you could just put a track in and instead of sending a hundred trucks you could just send one or two trains and it saved like probably millions and millions of, do of pounds in uh, costs of transport and travelling it was so important this line was but like even nowadays it probably transports millions of people every year like trust me I've, I've been on this line several times I used to catch it every week to, from between Newport and Cardiff on the South Wales Main Line which branches off this it's such an important route hence why it's got like six tracks at the moment 
and lots of yards all along it for the train. I wonder what's in our little wagons here. You don't really see these types of wagons any anymore. They're quite old and now we use bigger steel ones. They're probably concrete. I have no idea though. It doesn't really tell us, it just says I think they're called PCA wagons or PCA tanks or something. Oh, we're speeding a little bit. Black gauge there, that green and red one. I think I know what that is, but I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure that's how much tractive effort you have. So basically, if you apply power, it shows you how much power you're putting into it. So if I give it a bit of throttle you can see the needle rising, but if like you were stopped and you had a really heavy load and you just went like that and give it full throttle, I think that needle would end up going in the red and that would mean that you had to take the power out otherwise you'd burn out the motors. I'm not certain but I'm pretty sure that's what it is, I don't know what the name of that gauge is but I'm fairly sure I know it. I'll, as I said I'm not an expert on trains but I know it enough kind of so killer amps yeah i think that's the how much power the motors are getting speedometer obviously brake pipe control i think that's how much pressure's in the actual brake pipe airflow indicator that i couldn't tell you what that is probably the air brakes or something along that line this is the brakes if i apply the brakes a little bit uh or not I'll try taking the power out first Okay. Either our brakes don't work or I'm completely wrong about that. I'm sure that's the brake. I don't know. Perhaps that's the brake. I really don't know. Anything else we got of interest? That's the radio there. Engine controls, maybe? Brake demand. Oh god knows. I probably should learn a bit more about trains, but honestly, don't have time. Taflo, what does Taflo look like? I'm going to wait for it to get a little bit lighter before I get a thumbnail. If not, I'll just come back later, change the time up to get a good thumbnail. I do like getting a nice thumbnail, because it really makes the video look better and more appealing. Honestly, I've never heard of Taflo before probably have I just can't remember it but it seems pretty barren it's like it's probably like a small community I don't know though honestly I've heard of Maidenhead how far along are you now oh wow actually quite a fair bit of the way there probably about a third I love that, the Doppler effect then when the camera fell, um, when the camera stayed still, just hmm. It's like when an ambulance goes past you and, it, and the siren goes really high pitched as it goes into the distance. It's a really cool effect. So this is Maidenhead, or at least I assume it is. I don't know, I don't know this part of England, well I don't know England particularly well. I know my local area in Wales, but not so much England. I know the big cities, but not really the smaller ones. Same applies to Scotland. I'd love to give you some history about the local area, but I'm afraid I don't know any. <coughs> my throat's a little bit dry, let me just have a bit of my drink. God, I love energy drinks. Ooh, I wonder where that goes. Probably for a factory or something. Got a little bit of a yard going on there. Not much though, just two tracks. Oh, uh, we're going 80. <laughs> it was on full throttle and I didn't even know. I probably put it on full throttle by accident. Slow it down to 75. Although, to be fair, I'm not sure what happens if you break the speed. Probably nothing. Particularly in the game. Maybe in real life something breaks, but in the game, probably not. I doubt it, anything would happen if you broke the speed limit. I think it's just certified for 75 miles an hour, because, like, regulations in Britain. 
Perhaps, I don't think freight is allowed over a certain speed, so perhaps that's what it is. Perhaps it's just not certified to go faster than 75. And yeah, the windscreen wipers. I wonder if those blinds go down. Nope. Nope, not at all. What about the windows? Do they open? It looks like they do. Come on, you've got to open. Please. Nope. I am trying to drag them, but nope, apparently not. Anything behind us? Schematics? Probably something to do with the train. The engine. Because the engine would be just behind this bulkhead here. Don't know what they are. Probably air conditioning. Oh, that is a lever we can actually move there. Headlights. Oh, nothing interesting. Don't know what that is. No smoking. For advice, contact your line manager. <laughs> Amy Faye, if you if you manage to work your way up to become a train engineer and a train driver, I'm pretty sure you'd know the regulations about smoking on the train. I bet they do it. Seriously, I bet they smoke on the train. They just open the window or something. Because, Amy Faye, who would know? You're probably sat in here all day on your own, occasionally stopping at yards. Who honestly would know if you just opened this window here, lit up a cheeky cigarette? No one would ever find out. Maybe on a passenger train it would be different, but honestly, no one would find out. Just don't have one like 10 minutes before the end of your shift or the next driver will smell it. Rather than that. Like, I see trains all the time driving along, and pretty much all of them have their window open. Perhaps that's what it is. I'm on to you guys. I'm on to you train drivers. I know the secret. Uh, AWS. Almost missed it, and I forgot what the button was. Uh, what is that AWS for? Uh, probably a speed change. I wasn't paying attention. If we're changing tracks, then the speed limit's 70. What colour is that signal then? That's green. I honestly don't know what that was for. Uh, I'm just going to coast it. I think we're probably changing track. God, that white percent becomes annoying pretty quickly. I'm not sure if you can hear it because I turned the audio down a little bit in the uh, editing. But even if you can't or you can just if you can't be grateful you can't because it gets annoying pretty quick. Right, what are those signals down there saying? Oh, here comes the change. So are we changing track? I reckon we probably are. Moment of truth. Nope. Then in that case I have no idea what that AWS was about. God this train loses speed quick. I didn't break or anything, I just left it a coast, then it dropped speed, like, it's dropped like 20 miles an hour. God, I lose this speed, but we're coming up to Twyford, that's how you say that. Do you know, honestly, when I heard the name Twyford before, I thought it was Welsh. It doesn't sound like an English word. T-W-Y, it just doesn't sound right. Twy, it, it sounds Welsh. Longest word in the world in Wales. It's a uh, town on the on Anglesey, little island north of Wales. Fifty-eight letters long. Not like I'm showing off, I promise. Uh, it gave me the top down view. Oh. Ah. Oh. What? You can change the view. So you can stick. So that one, there's no other ones. If it's like a fixed view though, like this one, you can move where the camera is. So if you push left, it goes to that one. If you push right, it goes to that one. And if you push up, it goes to that one. That's cool. That's a free camera, so you can't move it around. Uh, you can't change it. And so it's just that top down camera. I didn't know that though. 
I genuinely didn't know that. Green light ahead. I don't know what that AWS was called. Perhaps it was an error. Occasionally it gives you some error ones, like not real ones. Don't know why, it just does. I know that at some point we are changing track though over to that one there, the one on the right. But I think that's towards Reading, just before Reading. Where are we? For the So the point where we change, I think it's near Reading. What's that there? No, this is Reading, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, what's the station I'm thinking of, the one up here? Didcot. It's Didcot that I'm thinking of. Uh, yep, Didcot. Just before Didcot we changed track. So, just by there where those blue lines are. We changed track by there. Onto this track. And then we diverge off here. Not here, but here diverge off onto these two tracks and then we go up towards uh, Oxford back in the cab how fast are we going? 70 pretty much perfect speed just keep an eye on that I, I genuinely thought it'd be brighter than this a little bit disappointed but meh I suppose it was my fault for choosing such an early, early journey yeah, brick wall. No idea why there's a brick wall there. Oh, there's one on either side. Huh. That's odd. Feels like the world's smallest carving for a bear. Or cutting. <coughs> Don't know why that brick wall's there. Seriously, that's a good point. There's nothing practical Unless it stops like rocks falling onto the track, there's nothing practical about that brick wall. Speed limit's going down to 50. That's brick. That's a little bit odd. That is that brick wall. That's thousands of bricks wasted for nothing. Probably a few million pounds as well. I don't know why the speed limit's dropping to 50. Are we coming up uh, because we're coming up on Reading, isn't it? Uh, yes it is. After red in the speed limit will go up again. I'm going to try avoiding braking, but I don't know if I can. It should coast down to 50. We've seen how fast it drops speed. We should be able to get it to coast down to 50 in a mile, I reckon. Going through platform 4. Obviously we're not stopping, we're not a passenger train. really big tankers on the side. Wonder what's in them. Well, they're hollow in the game, but in real life. Oh, what's that factory? That looks like a, I don't know, something to do with metal. An iron, <coughs> an iron works maybe. Got some tracks joining us now. I think these got third rail. I'm not sure though. I'm pretty sure these are like southwest trains tracks. And I think some of them got a third rail system. I might be wrong though, probably am. Yeah, no third rail, unless it's not been implemented in the game. Oh my god, we actually coasted below the speed limit. This train seriously drops speed like nobody's business. <coughs> Going for red now. Sorry about my sore throat, by the way, guys so annoying. Then I couldn't exactly just say ah, I'll record it tomorrow because I'm in work tomorrow night and I'll be sleeping through the day so that's pretty much my last chance to record this week and I gotta edit it so I'm gonna be doing that through the night. Kind of on Reading. This is the old station. They did redo Reading. That might be a bit of a decent thumbnail, but there. I reckon I can make that work. Lovely jabbly. Lovely jabbly. 
Right, we're going straight here whilst speeding it. 50 still, even though we slowed right down. Going up to 125 in a minute. I think, yeah, most HSTs, high speed trains, stop at Reading. That's why the speed limit's so low, because no trains need to go through there fast, really. No passenger services anyway, because everything that comes through here stops at Redden anyway, passenger-wise. We changing track here? Nope. Right, give it a bootful. In fact, no, I'm going, just going to let it go up slow. I'm going to give it half throttle and just let the speed build up. That's nice, that little blue strip around the warehouse. Obviously they just built the model and repeated it three times, but I don't know, it gives it a bit of detail. You can't expect them to recreate the route perfectly. Like, that would just never work. <coughs> like, if there's an industrial area, they just pop down random warehouses they have in their inventory. If it's houses, they pop down a few generic houses. I think they only really build it accurate if it's like either a landmark or it's right next to the track. Like bridges and things like that. Otherwise, they just put down generic things which are the same sort of building. Like, look, we got our blue stripe building again here. So this is like an industrial part of town. But instead of building every single building, which is impractical, they just plop down the same building over and over again. I suppose it makes sense. It's, you can't knock them down for that, because... One, imagine the time it would take to recreate this route, if it was 100% accurate. And two, imagine what your frame rates would be. Like, seriously. Your frame rates would be unbelievably low. Tilehurst. I think there's a depot in Tilehurst. Not certain, though. Don't quote me on that. Tilehurst depot. It's, I, don't, I don't know, it just sounds familiar. Oop, a little bit of a graphics glitch going on on the platform, then. Fair play, I do miss the old EWS library. I have a friend whose dad drove EWS Class 66ers. It is a nice train. It's up, gotta be the most popular freight train in Britain. Gotta be. But I just see them all the time, every single day. I tell you, there's one park right behind my house right now. If the blind wasn't shut, I'd be able to see it behind me. Like, they're just everywhere. They've probably built well over a thousand of them. They use them in other countries as well, I'm sure of it. I'm sure I read that before somewhere. But again, don't quote me on that. Lovely little housing area up by there, housing estate. It is weird, even though they use generic buildings, they I find that they put in just enough real buildings, like this bridge is probably real here, this type of bridge, it probably is an arch bridge with like a thick brick bit in the middle. They print just enough realistic parts that you recognise it, even though most of it is made up. Like when I drove through Newport, because Newport is my hometown, like I'd look at where my house was and go, that's not my house, but it feels familiar. It's like I knew it, even though it's most of it's not even real. Like it is weird, like the only things really that are there in real life that they implemented in the game uh, the station obviously, the two tunnels after the station, the castle and the red bridge. That's pretty much it. But despite that, you just look at it and go, yeah, this is this is home. It feels like home. It is, it's such an odd thing, how little things make all the difference. Like, like that, pro there probably is a good uh, there in real life with no signals on it, like a really old one or something. Like it just makes you feel at home. Got a little red red bus for there, double decker bus. No, I'm being stereotypical. Every bus in Britain is a red bus, if you didn't know. 
There's no single decker bus. Every one of them is a red double decker bus. They're everywhere. All taxis are black cabs. It's not a London cab. They're everywhere. And we all drink tea. Stereotypes. <laughs> is it just me or are the first five wagons a different colour to the rear ones? Or a different type even? Tell me I'm not crazy. Yeah, they're different. They're like bent. It's like a really fat person sat on it. That's weird. I was looking at that thinking, is it just that they're far away so the LOD is different? But no, they're genuinely different carriages. That's odd. Ooh, we got a road next to us. Wonder what road that is. Not a very busy one, that's the answer. <clears throat> that's one thing this game is bad at. Traffic. Like, none of the cars are realistic. The traffic densities are... Perhaps... No other word for it. That's the one thing this game is really bad at, well, one of the things this game is really bad at is traffic. And the fact that there's a weird rain patch around those trees, around all the trees even. That's not particularly realistic. It's not like snow doesn't fall next to trees. What game is it? I think it's this game. Where... No, it's not this one. One game I've played, I can't remember which one it was, I thought it was this one. If it's raining, then the rain only falls in like a little square around the character. It might be Grand Theft Auto V, I'm not sure. But if you go into this kind of camera mode, it, it'll just be dry, 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 car gets closed, and then it starts raining, and then it goes dry all again, all of a sudden. It's so funny. I think it's Grand Theft Auto, I'm not sure though. It's, it's one of the games I've played quite a lot before. But it's so funny because you go into an external camera and it's just like a block of rain around the character or the car. It used to make me giggle so much. How far are we now? 20 miles. So we should be getting close to Didcot now. Didcot famous for a power station. If I remember right, we've got a massive power station uh, there. That's probably what these are. Didcot reception, Didcot call, and loop. That definitely sounds like something you'd find in a power station. It also has a museum by here, like a railroad museum, a train mo uh, museum. And then the line splits off to Reading, and further on this way. That would be the rest of the Great West Main Line. So as you can see, it says Swindon there. That goes to Swindon. It goes to Bristol, South East England, Wales. Joins on to the West Coast Main Line. Pretty much everywhere. It goes everywhere. <coughs> Why is that track so far away from us? You could fit another track in there, this gap. That's odd. I noticed there a while back, I just thought it's because there was a bridge pillar or something I had to avoid, but nope. Just want to have two really big gaps. Unless there used to be a track there and there. I don't know, it could be. Not much further now though. Why are all the signals green if there's no trains? I'm pretty sure signals stay red until a train's near them. I know, could be wrong, but it sounds like it would make sense. What's this thing? Cholsey? I don't know how to say that. It looks like Cholsey. Cholsey? Cholsey. Cholsey. I know. I'm just going to call it Cholsey. I don't know, that sounds weird though. Cholsey. Cholly? No. That's, that just sounds stupid. Cholsey. I'm just going to call it Cholsey. Never heard of it. Never seen it written down. A name... A lot of the names in Britain are weird. Like, one thing I've noticed is a lot of Americans 
say like they full on pronounce the word ham at the end of like say Birmingham they say Birmingham not Birmingham and one that actually caught me out when I was going to Liverpool the train I was on went through a place and it was spelled L-E-O-M-I-N-I-S-T-R like Leo Minister where it's actually pronounced Leinster that caught me out I don't know when though I go there never heard of uh, Leo Minister before my time was like no it's Leinster <coughs> so yeah a lot of weird places in Britain there's a great video online of Americans trying to pronounce British and Welsh uh, town names just, just no they did not get it right not at all I'm spending so much time in third person that's so unlike me I'm usually sat in the cab just talking and talking and talking can we go to the other seat yes we can first aid uh, hot plate oh my god are you kidding me there is a freaking hot plate in the cab that was unexpected. I doubt we can turn it on. No. Dimmer. Oh, cab light. Let's try zooming out. Obviously not animated, it just slightly illuminates the interior, but okay. Still a cool feature. Wipers. Wiper left. Ooh, don't know what I did. Turn the wipes off. Double yellow, we need to be careful of that. Windscreen wiper right. Wait, what? Right, so it's not implemented, but in real life you can turn on the left or the right wiper or both. That's cool. Horn DSD, don't know what that is. Don't know why. That's a first aid kit. Got a horn. That's so cool though. There's a freaking hot plate. It was like, you are Jeff. Drive the train. I'll cook. It. I'll make us a uh, bacon sarnie. How did health and safety certify that? Seriously. Speed limit's going down to 70, even though we're only going 64. That's me talking about hot plate and Jeff. Another AWS uh, warning coming up now because we got an orange light up ahead. That's probably so we'd slow down in time for the point. No idea, just guessing. So, prepared. The AWS ramp, by the way, the thing that signals it is that on the floor there. And if you don't press the alerter, the little button which is Q on a keyboard, A on a controller, then the train slams on the emergency brakes because it assumes you're dead. Oh my god, that's a red light. We have a red light and I'm going stupidly fast. Oh, I gotta love it. Talking about AWS, how oh, I miss an AWS. What I'm gonna do, is we're never gonna stop in, but I'm gonna press tab. Oh, it just changed. Ooh, glad that happened. My plan was to press tab as we went right up to it and hope it, because if you press tab, it says you can pass a red signal at danger. But if that hadn't worked, the emergency brakes would have been stuck on, and we would have been screwed. I, the scenario might have ended. I don't think so. I think that's only career mode, but still. So now we're changing onto the slow line so we can divert off into Oxford. Is that a double yellow ahead? Mm, no, it's a single yellow with a right hand turn signal. I think. Yep. So I'm just going to coast, I think, because the next signal after that might be red. In fact, I'm going to break a little bit. You have a very good control of the brake in this train. Like you can put it on 2%. Normally it's notched, so you can only have on random amounts like 15, 30. But this one, you can just put it on whatever setting you want. That's pretty cool. I'm going to slow down to about 20, I think. I don't know why we have a red light. 
or a yellow light, it could be that the next signal's red, so I better start slowing down quick. Going past Didcot Station, we don't stop at Didcot. There is a platform by here, if I remember right, but I'm pretty sure that's for the museum that you have trips out on the train and stuff. Yep, there it is. <clears throat> I don't think any passenger services actually stop there. I don't know, I could be wrong. Uh, no, that's not the button I wanted. I wanted to take the brake off. Five tanks with five bent tanks afterwards. No idea why. I don't know why they're bent. Probably something to do with pressure. Oh, we slowed down way too much then. I get carried away so easily. What's that blue sign? 53 MP. Probably miles mar mile markers. MP could be miles to Paddington, maybe? 53 miles from Paddington? I don't know, that sounds reasonable. 63 miles for, uh, between Paddington and Oxford sounds accurate. Once again, I'm purely guessing. Right, we can go all the way up, back up to top speed now. That's good. As we join on to this track at least. I don't actually know if there's any services from uh, west of England to Oxford. I don't think I've ever heard of one. Certainly not the one that goes from Cardiff, but there could be. I don't know, I thought it'd, I think it'd make more sense if you transferred at Reading, personally. But I don't know, I could be wrong. I probably am. I'm wrong with most things, so never take my word as a given. 9.52. Been recording about 50, well, 52 minutes now. Quite cool. Now, if I remember right, the country, well, this part of the track is just countryside, so it's pretty barren around here. But, I don't know. I, I honestly thought it'd get a bit lighter. So, that was a bit of a mix of sounds then. I don't know where that track goes. Where does that go? Uh, a fueling station. Appleford Sidings. Cool. Not much more to say about that, other than the fact we're in Appleford. Uh, very barren. That's my first impression, considering, you know, can't see a single house. Oh, there's a few over there, actually. I think. Is that a house? Uh, yeah, just a few small houses dotting around. That's Appleford. I'm impressed he managed to get his own train station being that small. 70 miles an hour. Only 8 miles left to go. Less than 8 miles. I'm pretty sure it's top speed all the way there except right at the end. I know. Honestly, I haven't driven this route in probably nearly a year now. I don't, honestly, this is one of the games, like, I don't have much time, I'll admit, and most of the time I'm on a game, I'm recording, but when I'm not recording, Train Sim is just not the kind of game I jump into and say, yeah, I'll play a bit of Train Sim, but like, I've never switched on my computer and gone, ooh, I'd love to drive a Class 66 right now, I just, I don't get that here, and mainly I turn on Grand Theft Auto. A game I do want to get is Wildlands, Tom Clancy Wildlands. The graphics in that are stunning. But the problem is that a lot of these games are online. And as sad as this is going to sound, I don't have any friends which play the same, which I play online with. Because they're either words I can't say, begins with an A, ends with soul. Uh, or they just don't like the same type of games as me. Like, none of my best friends would sit there and play Grand Theft Auto Online with me, because when, for a start, none of them have computers good enough to run it. 
But even if they did, they, they're just the type of person which stands around the corner with a bazooka and when they see you, bang, blow up your car, kill you. They're just that type of person. And I, I tend to want to actually build up a little clan instead of just killing each other. And it, it's a shame. I would love to have my own little clan one day. Just sit there with my friend, play online, record it, and all of us have this own little clan. But mm, I don't know. I might convince my friends one day. I know one of them's getting a good, a computer good enough soon. So I don't know. Maybe in the future you'll have online videos. I don't mind playing by myself, but it does. It is a bit sad, isn't it? <laughs> Just going. I'm going to play an online game with your friends. No, don't have any. <laughs> Just clarify, I do have friends. Even I'm not that sad. Just muttering on about, I don't have any friends. Wow. That is an all new level for me. I do have friends, just none I would consider playing online with. They have Xbox One, I have PC, what can I say? Five miles out, less than five miles. I've just been nattering on. Pretty sure nattering is not a word. I do make up a lot of my own words. But you know, it's fun. At least then no one can be an ass and correct you about your spelling. You spelled nattering wrong. I invented the word, go away. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, this snow does ma does it's brilliant for your frame rate. If you have a not very good computer, just run snow. Honestly, I'm getting a solid 80 frames a second right now. Obviously you won't, you'll be getting 60 because that's what I exported in, but still, very good for frame rates this is. It is a bit weird though how you can get in a game and it'll go, you're getting 1500 frames a second. It's like, no I'm not, my TV only does 50. <laughs> the most you can get on a TV I think is 144, which it's too fast for the human eye to register anyway. So. They might as well just tell you your actual frame rate, not what you should be getting. Like, there should be an option for that. Because, yeah, it's a bit show off -y. Ooh, look at me, my computer can get 1400 frames a second on this homepage. It's like, yeah, but that's not what you're seeing. Why, why would you want a graphics card that can give you that many frames a second if you can't see it for one and two your TV won't register it. Like even if I was a billionaire and I had the best TV going, what's the point in getting like 10 Titan graphics cards? Because like one of them will handle most games at a solid 144 frames a second if you're playing on good graphics. So having 10, it just, you have two graphics card and eight redundant ones. It's just pointless because you can go, oh look at me, I'm getting 4,000 frames a second on Grand Theft Auto 5. It's like, no you're not, you're getting 144. Yeah, it's a consistent 144, but it's still pretty pointless. I mean, I'm happy as long as it don't dip below 30. God, look how slow we're going, that's me chatting again. I really need to keep an eye on the speed. That's my main thing I've taken away from today's session. Stop talking, watch the speed. Is that bush on the track? Yeah, pretty sure that's not there in real life. If something grew like that, it would get hit by every train on past until eventually it died. Is that yellow light for us? Probably. Two and a half miles out. Speeding it'll start going down slowly now. Little yard on the left here. AWS. Uh, please tell me that 25 is not for me. I bet it is. There's a 25 speedboard then. But only if you're changing track. And I bet you we're changing track now. I am going to slow down to 25 just to be sure. Just because I want to be safe. I don't want to get all the way to the end and derail. Because that would absolutely suck. 
My, no, not change track. So I slowed it down all that way for nothing. That's the thing, you can't trust the HUD on this game. They'll be like, yeah, yeah, you're going. You're going straight, you are. No need to worry about speed board. So you full throttle and then you derail because you hit the points. Like you, sh you should always take the HUD with a pinch of salt. Like, yeah, the track you might, you're might you on might have a speed limit of 90, but you, it doesn't tell you if you're about to hit a point with a speed limit of 20 sometimes. So it's like, ooh, I'm going 90 miles an hour. I crashed. It's just, it is a bit stupid like that. Right, I think we can give it 50% throttle. In fact, let's give it full throttle. Why not? Oh, no, there's the platform coming up. That's where we got to stop. As I said, not sure why they want... 10 wagons, 10 tank cars in uh, Reading Station, but if that's what they want, that's what they'll get. I'm right, so gonna put, give it about 26, 25% throttle, quarter throttle, uh, throttle brake, even quarter brake, just to bring it to a nice gentle stop at Oxford. I think it's been a pretty cool uh, ride. We've had a nice little chat. Not the best scenery because of the weather. I probably should have changed the weather up a little bit. But good nonetheless. I love this locomotive. It's so classic. Uh, these wagons, not really much to say about them. They're a bit plain. It would have been nice to see a livery. It was certainly nostalgic seeing the EWS livery. But yeah, I've had quite a lot of fun I have guys today. Now all we have to do is stop in the right place. There's a red signal up ahead. EWS ramp. Yep. Uh, right, the signal's going green. All we need to do now is stop in the right place. And then finish the video, I suppose. As I said earlier, Transport Fever, make sure you go check that out. It is brilliant at the moment. I cannot wait to get to build this hub. Like, if I'm excited to build it, it must be awesome. Like normally, I just sit there and go, eh, "Well, I'll have to do this." I get, I have a good idea. I get excited about the idea, but a lot of it's tedious. Like printing the tracks and the signals. I'm genuinely excited about this hub, though. Print it in. Oh, I can't wait. I'm probably going to do that tonight. Actually, screw it. Who needs sleep anyway? Right, is that another red signal? No, ours is green. We're going a little bit slow, so I'll just give it a quarter throttle. If I give it full throttle, will that thing go in the red? Nope. I was hoping to get this needle here in the red, but not going to happen. I think to do that you need a really heavy load combined with poor traction, I suppose. I knew it. I knew he was changing track here. But there's no way the speed limit on that is more than... Oops, excuse me. More than 15... 20, maybe 25. Yeah, 25 exactly. But it didn't tell me that on the hood. Or at least I don't think it did. I probably just missed it. Alright, let's stop here. Uh, three quarters brakes. That's the brake gauge there. I thought it was, but it wasn't moving earlier when I put the brakes on. That threw me a little bit. Anyway, guys, this has been great. Thank you for joining me on this journey from London Paddington to Oxford in the class 66 EWS I've had a lot of fun so thank you so much for joining me make sure you check out Transport Fever and I will see you next time peace out guys